Hi, my name is Haley Pertzborn, and I'm a fourth year pharmacy student at Drake University. And today I'll be talking about phenobarbital use within alcohol withdrawal syndrome. My objectives for this presentation are to understand alcohol withdrawal syndrome or AWS symptoms and clinical presentation, understand phenobarbital's mechanism in treating AWS, and applying literature regarding phenobarbital's efficacy within AWS treatment. So alcohol withdrawal syndrome or AWS occurs when an individual stops or significantly decreases alcohol intake after long-term dependence or frequent binge drinking. And frequent is kind of defined as numerous times per week for a prolonged period of time um, and or that daily consumption of alcohol. So the steps that lead to AWS, um, so ethanol works in two ways. So it works on GABA, which is the inhibitory neurotransmitter in our body, and it works on glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitter in our body. And it works on GABA by binding to GABA receptors and enhancing that those inhibitory effects on the CNS, and then it binds to NMDA receptors, which are, is where glutamate binds, and it inhibits the excitatory effects on the CNS. So it enhances inhibitory effects as well as inhibiting excitatory effects on the CNS. So what happens when cessation occurs or that abrupt decrease of alcohol intake, your body is no longer inhibiting the excitatory effects on the CNS, so you're overloaded, um, which leads to an increased excitatory state or like a hyper excitatory state. So this presents um, kind of in varying degrees. So mild, mild to moderate symptoms include hypertension, insomnia, hyperreflexia, nervousness, um, hallucinations, and then seizures can also occur. Mostly um, withdrawal seizures happen 12 to 24 hours post cessation. Um, GI upset like nausea and vomiting, headache, and heart palpitations can also occur. In severe alcohol withdrawal syndrome, it's called delirium tremens is kind of the term that's um, coined. And its mainstay is that it's a combination of altered sense and physical symptoms. So you're getting those mental and physical symptoms that present. Um, so the visual, visual hallucinations are happening, hyperthermia, um, tachycardia, hypertension, sweating. It's kind of a combination of everything, mental and physical. So getting into how phenobarbital works in AWS. So the dosage for um, alcohol withdrawal, the initial dose is 130 or 260 milligrams once. Um, and then you can do 136 130 milligrams every 15 to 30 minutes until those symptoms resolve um, so an acute situation and then maintenance for like the taper is 130 to 260 milligrams per day in two to three doses for three to five days um, so you're doing it two to three times a day for three to five days you're tapering off um, by 10 percent each day as well um, and that duration and that dosage will kind of depend on how your patient presents and things like that um, and then IM, IV is preferred, but you can also give it IM, and that's 60 to 260 milligrams once. You are using phenobarbital in an acute um, setting, and so for only three to five days normally. So the adverse effects that normally we think of with phenobarbital won't necessarily happen as often or as severe, um, but they definitely are still are things we need to think about. Um, so hypotension, bradycardia, um, it is a CNS depressant for sure, so CNS effects, hypersensitivity reactions as well. So just make sure you're monitoring those vitals, um, CNS status, um, which the patient is going through withdrawal as well. So kind of being wary of that, um, just making sure they're not getting any worse. Um, and then dermato dermatological reactions as well. The proposed mechanism um, for phenobarbital is that it works kind of in two ways. So it prolongs amount of time the amount of time chloride channels are open, which um, enhances GABA effects, so the inhibitory effects. Um, but it also blocks NMDA receptors to help decrease CNS citation, which is also what ethanol does. Um, so you're kind of doing the same thing ethanol is doing without actually intaking alcohol. Um, and this is different than benzodiazepines, which are the mainstay therapy for um, alcohol withdrawal, um, but they rely heavily on continued GABA effects and um, some things that have been talked about was like there's possibly um, low endogenous GABA concentrations when somebody is um, a chronic alcohol user, or there could even be changes in the GABA receptor. So use, utilizing GABA might not really work as well. Um, so having that additional mechanism is what kind of makes phenobarbital different than a benzo. Um, as well as it does have a longer half-life of about three days. Um, so that could also work in our favor um, to kind of treat that um, with as a patient is continuing to go through withdrawal sy symptoms. 
So some uh, literature that I looked at when talking about this, um, when looking at this topic, the first um, study I looked at was a non-match self-controlled by the physician retrospective cohort study. It had 137 patients and about 652 encounters of alcohol withdrawal syndromes within those patients. Um, and then something to note quickly is that there was no significant difference in CWA scores between all three groups. And CWA scores are just the um, measurement of how severe the withdrawal, sin well, withdrawal is for the patient. Um, so it just goes to show that that factor was kind of taken out as uh, all three groups patients were kind of were going through the same symptoms. So there was no, no big differences in severity. The outcomes of this study showed that the combination group um, kind of had the worst outcomes. Um, phenobarbital and benzodiazepine monotherapy wasn't, there weren't any significant differences really between the two um, in terms of this um, and it also in terms of returning to the emergency department within 40 hours um, between all three groups. Um, the combination group usually had one agent, usually um, benzodiazepine was used first and then they would switch to the other agent or phenobarbital usually. Um, and they kind of talked about how this might be considered treatment failure by the physician, but they weren't 100% sure. But the combination group did find that there was a longer time spent in the ED, more incidence of hypotension, and more patients admitted to the ICU for um, more severe treatment. And then the other study I looked at um, was a retrospective chart review. Um, and this had 419 patients receiving benzodiazepine treatment and 143 patients receiving phenobarbital treatment. It showed no significant difference in primary secondary outcomes. And the main thing they were looking at was the development of alcohol withdrawal related complications. So including like seizures, hallucinations, delirium, and they didn't find any um, differences between um, the phenobarbital group or the benzo group. And there was also no significant difference um, regarding sedation rates or anything like that between um, like the tapered therapy for either. Um, so this kind of shows that the half-life of phenobarbital have, being lo a little longer than benzos doesn't necessarily mean that that makes it more efficacious. Um, another thing that I would like to know was that transitions from benzodiazepine to phenobarbital showed rapid improvement. Um, whereas the last study kind of showed that they had worse outcomes um, when they were transitioned from benzos to phenobarbital, so that combination therapy. And this um, study found that there was rapid improvement. As far as my conclusions go, I do think that phenobarbital has shown efficacy in AWS treatment. I do believe that benzodiazepines still remain the mainstay treatment for AWS, but phenobarbital can be used in, as an alternative for someone who presents with like benzodiazepine failure or with somebody with a more complex history of alcohol dependence and alcohol withdrawal syndrome symptoms. I do think there is a need for future studies specifically with phenobarbital and, and patients with a seizure history with um, alcohol withdrawal syndrome, as I think that was kind of a gap in where phenobarbital might find its place within treatment for AWS. And these are my references, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Thank you.